Here we are at the project site of Acosturas, which is owned by a copper producer. This area is used for mineral mining, production, and extraction of minerals. Even though we are only in the early stages of exploration, the end goal is mineral production. Our company also has the important objective of conserving biodiversity and the responsible use of natural resources. We are looking to develop a sustainable project in the area where we are working. The Santurban Paramo complex is located in the province of northern Santander and the province of Santander with an area of about 142,000 hectares. This region has been taken advantage of and exploited for more than 450 years. The area has now evolved and sees human intervention like mining, like agriculture and the forestry industry. The agriculture industry has caused the biggest impact in degrading the soil through intensive farming. Also, the natural landscapes have seen exploitation which has caused some species to become threatened and has restricted their habitats. Because of all this, when we arrived here, we decided to start to recuperate the areas that were destroyed or had seen deterioration because of human activity. In Colombia, there is a native perennial subshrub, or frailejon, called an Espeletia conglomerata. We know very little about it, and how it propagates was almost a myth until recently. The Eco Ordo Company did a study about the propagation, adaptation, and growth of this plant, which is fundamental for the conservation of these fragile high mountain ecosystems, like the Paramo of San Turban. The study that was done helped us establish a greenhouse with very controlled conditions, where we have been able to successfully grow the frailejón. Typical species of the region include the Espeletia conglomerata. Of course, we are talking about a species that only grows in these very high altitudes. The Espeletia conglomerata is a species of frailejón, which is native to this region. In this region, it is a species that only grows in the mountain range of Santurban and is considered to be very important for the conservation of this region. Here in this region, they were devastated. They were all cut down many years ago and just recently have begun to recuperate the oakwood populations. Right now, part of the conservation programs are aimed at this, conservation and care for the nature surrounding us like how the municipality cares for its natural surroundings, how companies should do it. It is recuperating areas that have been exploited and have important species that need conservation. Santurban Paramo. We are now in the village of Angosturas, in the municipality of California. This town is located on the border between the provinces of Santander and North Santander. The Eco Oro Company has a clear conservation strategy to recover native plant populations. But before that is accomplished, they must implement responsible management of biodiversity and natural resources. They have identified these species as having a high conservation value. One of them is the Espeletia conglomerata, a species that is restricted to a specific geographical region and is thus affected by all activities taking place in those regions. 
una especie difícil. This is a difficult species. Unfortunately, there isn't a lot of experience in the country about how to propagate this type of species. They're not very well known. Little is known about the ecology of this species. Knowledge of how they propagate or their physiology is not very extensive, since we have not had a lot of experience with them. We have developed many different strategies here. Starting from the germination phase, we've studied where they grow, how they grow, how they develop, what are their nutritional requirements, what are the environmental requirements these species need in order to develop. And part of that knowledge has led us to be able to grow them in a nursery. This nursery meets certain criteria, starting from the preparation of the soil, seed selection, the selection of individuals from which the seeds will be extracted, so as to guarantee that the populations and the genetic material are preserved, and that genetic flow in these regions is assured. The nursery houses Frailejon at different growth stages, the pre-germination stage, specimens selected in the field, we choose individuals with good characteristics and that have large populations in the field. They are taken to the nursery and carefully selected. They are opened, we moisten them to activate all of the physiological processes needed for the plant to begin germination. Then they are moved to germination beds. Before they are taken there, the process of selecting the perfect combination of substate is performed. They undergo a growth stage, which lasts an average of two to four months. After that, we can in four or five months after germination, see individuals that are five or four centimeters. This has allowed us to demystify a little the existing paradigms about the growth of the frailejon. Colombia is a country with high biodiversity. It's a mega diverse country, and that makes it have a very large diversity of species. Specifically, the plant group is very diverse. Espeletia conglomerata is one of them. There are many distributed throughout the country and each one grows at its own pace. They each have very specific growth requirements and individual needs. This then allows us to accumulate some knowledge about these species and to say with certainty that in less than two years, we can obtain individuals that are almost 60, 70 centimeters tall, adult flowering specimens. This individual belongs to a very important species, one of the more or less 80 species we have here in the nursery. It was strategically selected because it's a protected plant. It's a plant that has been protected for many years. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was protected in the 60s. It is distributed throughout the entire country, but in this region there are important oak groves with a high degree of genetic diversity. Some studies have reached the conclusion that there are interesting populations here. Unfortunately, they face large challenges. Many of the areas with substantial oak cover were devastated. For example, like in the place where we are now, here in this preservation project. With the goal of preserving and recuperating these species along this valley, we have propagated in the nursery. 19, almost 20,000 oak trees here at the Eco Oro Nursery. And we were able to extract seed material from oaks native to here. Their germination was difficult, and we tried every single method known to man. We tried many different substrates, oak mantle, etc., until we had the same experience as with the Fray Lejon. We hit upon that perfect, specific combination that works. Capote de rol, de rol here, we have individuals with which we have started the oak reforestation process in nearly 34 hectares that are planted with these trees. And we now have individuals that are three and four years old. 
In the approximately four years that we have been planting, we now have specimens in the field that measure four, five, six meters in height. It has been a really successful experience. The Santo Van Paramo. Santo Van Paramo. The Kuntas Lake is one of 25 lakes located in the Santo Van Paramo. We are in the Kunta Lake, which is part of the Santurban Paramo Lake Complex. The Environmental Foundation has now declared a protected area of 45,000 hectares. That includes the regional natural park, the Santurban Nature Reserve, the La Judía Regional Nature Reserve, as well as the Rasgón Forest, the DMI Paramo in Berlin, the Papayal Cienega, and the Swamp Reserve. These are strategic areas, and they are joined together to make biological corridors. This natural scenario has a Paramo ecosystem that is very valuable, because it contains species native to the area, flora as well as fauna, and they must be preserved in light of the many environmental services it provides to the metropolitan area of Bucaramanga. It is a well-known fact that the Paramo produces the water that supplies the metropolitan area of Bucaramanga, which has nearly two million inhabitants. By declaring the park as a nature preserve, we guarantee the conservation of the ecosystem as well as of the environmental services it provides for the rest of the province of Santander. I work with the CDMB as a forest warden. I am in charge of five locations, four here in the town of Vetas and one in Charta. I make the rounds every day, making sure that cattle don't get in, preserving the environment. As you can see by the preservation of the lakes, the preservation of the Paramo is a reality. I think that if people are in a capacity to take care of these paramos like they have been doing, they should continue, because otherwise these beautiful lagoons would not exist. People have been taking care of these paramos for a while now. A biological corridor is formed from the time we identify certain areas as IMDs or Integrated Management Districts. In some other sectors, we find areas that belong to nature preserves, and within those areas, there are some areas of the forest that, because of the formation and typology of the landscape, and because of human presence in the area, they can't be declared as protected because there is agricultural activity. So we try to locate those areas that recharge the water table, or those areas where there are protected streams, and try to connect them with natural reserves. So we have defined those as biological corridors, and with that, we are seeking to have the community take ownership of them and leave those areas alone, so as to maintain the balance of water resources in the area. Likewise, good management of the ecosystem is part of the strategy. That is the fundamental function performed by these biological corridors. Uh, 
The CNB's primary interest is to generate knowledge and begin to spread the knowledge, not just in the country, but internationally, of how important this ecosystem is. We know that paramos are ecosystems that only exist in five countries in the world, so by definition, it is a strategic ecosystem. It is a very valuable ecosystem for the country from the point of view of the water, from the point of view of biodiversity, from the point of view of the country's adjustment to climate change. So the message is that we should all contribute to the conservation of these ecosystems, which is not the responsibility of the CNB, but that of the whole country. So this is a call for the whole country to work together so that we can do this together and we can implement whatever management plans are formulated so that finally this beautiful space that we are seeing, this lake, like the 28 other lakes located in the park, plus those that are in north of Santander. So the effort must be not just regional, but national and international. It should involve not just entities that deal with the environment, but other institutions that can provide technical, economic, logistic, and financial resources. It requires everyone's support. Therefore, we need to generate consciousness that there's only one ecosystem, that we should preserve it, and that we need to recover lost ground through restoration processes. And by promoting environmental culture, not just with neighboring communities, but also with communities in the metropolitan area and from around the country, so that we can preserve this ecosystem for everyone's benefit in the future. Santurban Paramo. Municipality of Tona, Berlin Village, Province of Santander, Colombia. Berlin belongs to the municipality of Tona. It is located 3,305 meters above sea level. It is located on the road that travels from Bucaramanga to Cúcuta. The primary activity in the local economy is agriculture. In this case, the cultivation of onions and potatoes, respectively. Even though you have other crops on a smaller scale, such as green beans, oats, and also some livestock ranching. We are in the village of Berlin, town of Tona, province of Santander, in the Light of Hope School. From here, we educate children in the area of ecology from preschool through 11th grade. We start in preschool. In preschool and first grade, we work on water resources. In the second and seventh grade, on soil resources. In the third and eighth grade, we work on water and energy. In the 4th and ninth, we work on biodiversity. And in the 5th, 11th, and 12th, we work on environmental policy. These young students create handicrafts in and out of school with the products recycled at home and at school. They are educated from an early age in the proper use of resources, garbage recycling, and in caring for the environment. They also teach them about the importance of propagation and care of native species. How are you, Hernando? Very well. How are you? How is the onion crop? Is it good? Excellent? Excellent. Yes, sir. 
Is it very cold? A little. Ah, good, Hernando. You have seen the work that we have been doing with the CMB, with the management of the IMD, what we have been doing with environmental zoning. How do you see the changes in training sessions we have been implementing? We know that solid residues were mismanaged in the past as a byproduct of cultivation. Have you seen a change in the community? Have you seen changes emanating from the community? Yes, of course. What changes have you generated? Because we have started to manage new cultivation systems to prevent contamination. You mean water contamination? We are protecting the water. For now, we will remove crops from riversides. We will protect water springs and pick up all of the chemical residues and all the receptacles, everything, and we have it hauled away by the garbage truck. Solid waste? Yes, sir. I work here in the Paramo, where I make a living for me and my family. This is the wealth of the Paramo, the onion crop. This is our work. That is why we always demand that they let us work, that they let us keep it forever. Because that has been the situation in the Paramo. And that is where our families derive their sustenance, their future. The future of our families is tied to the Paramo. In order to survive, we have to do these jobs.